of Sahagun and Our Lady of Peace, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today's saint lived in 15th century Spain. He became an Augustinian friar in the year 1463, as that was the strictest order around which he could enter. St. John, called of Sahagun, which was the name of the, of the village where he was born, was a, is a, a worthy successor of St. Barnabas. He too is a son of consolation, full of the Holy Ghost, a man who successively detached himself from one kind of worldly goods after another, detached himself as well of his own will in his own way, so that he could become a very great peacemaker. He died on the feast day of St. Barnabas and was very worthy, certainly, to do so. St. John of Sahagun was is particularly known perhaps for three things. First of all, he was a marvelous peacemaker among men. Next, he was a mystic of the man. He was one of those saints who saw our Lord, either as a holy child or in his passion during his mass. And thirdly, he was a martyr to his own preaching. Um, he came as a result of prayer to his parents who otherwise could not have any children, he was born on the feast of St. John the Baptist, so he was named after our Lord's great forerunner, and indeed he was the precursor or the forerunner of our Lord throughout the whole of his life. His uh, father, the nobleman, sent him to be educated by the Benedictine monks, and when his education was completed, according to the customs of the day, he wanted him to have the official appointment, which was in his power to grant, of being the pastor of a certain parish, which meant he would have a guaranteed income. That was called having a benefit. What was usually done for many centuries is that these uh, benefices were given to certain men, and they would take some of the money to live on, and with a little of the money they would hire a very poor priest who had no connections actually to do the job. Well, you can see it was a, it was a path of, of great corruption, open to every kind of abuse, and our saints, although a young man, wouldn't do that. So he went to see his uncle, who was a priest in the, um, in the city of Burgos in Spain, and his uncle told his daddy to let him alone and let him resign that job, because that benefit would not be pleasing to our Lord, but to come with him and see his bishop, who would take care of him. The bishop of Burgos was a very holy man, and appreciated the sanctity of this young man, and he saw him uh, finish his training and be ordained as a priest. But he too gave him several, it's called livings or benefices, and at a certain point, in a fit of piety, he resigned everything, except for one little chapel where he would offer Mass every day and preach very fruitfully to the people. At some point in his life, he gave away everything that he had after the death of his parents. And um, at another point, he um, uh, was suffering very, very seriously from kidney stone. And he promised our Lord that if he survived the surgery, back then surgeries were very crude, why, that he would enter religion, so he became an Augustinian recollect. And there uh, he caused everyone to be recollected by the sanctity of his ways, his preaching. He worked many miracles. That's a little picture there of our, of our saint healing a, a, a man who had to walk on crutches. He took him to a miraculous crucifix and said a prayer, and he was miraculously healed. He raised several children back to life from death. But sinners, by his preaching, he was always able to touch and to move. Um, and at the same time, he was a very great peacemaker. Spain had been fighting the Muslims for so long that they say that everybody was armed to the teeth. And so it didn't take too much uh, for one person to insult another. And pretty soon, there was a feud that would break out into a kind of a civil war. And mind you, these were all Catholics. And sometimes the fighting was even done sacrilegiously in the churches. So our saint, would, when he saw or heard that something was going on in town, Salamanca, well, he would go right there and he would start preaching against it. Once um, the leader of one of the factions sent his uh, troops over to kill the priest, but when they saw how holy he was, they had their second thoughts, and then they tried to, one tried to raise his arm to strike him, 
and his arms were paralyzed. On another occasion in his preaching, he preached um, in the presence of a, of a mighty general who had been very successful against the Muslim. But he preached against the oppression of one, uh, uh, we would call them perhaps rental farmers. They were called vassals or serfs back then. And this man thought that he was, Saint was preaching directly against him. He took offense, and he too sent some soldiers to kill our saint. And the soldiers were struck by God. The saint healed them. And then the general was struck by God with a very serious illness. And he prayed for him. He forgave him. And uh, the saint then was able to restore him to good health. All of this while, while being truly a mystic, he would arise at midnight to chant the divine office, then he would stay in church all night long in prayer in preparation for his holy mass. One time the prior of his monastery got after him because it took him so long to say mass, and he begged to be excused saying that he saw our Lord, and there was nothing that he could do because our Lord kept him there in mystical conversation. He was so successful in his preaching and in peacemaking that finally you might say he died as a result of it. There was a well-known prominent citizen in town who was living in a sinful relationship with a woman. And he persuaded the man to leave this woman and to live in the monastery to do penance. And as the poet says, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. And so that woman resolved to get revenge on the saint, and it is said that she slowly poisoned him over a number of months, so our saint died in excruciating pain, a very slow death, but never complaining and always happy. Uh, they say it is for the priest to be offered up in sacrifice as well as to offer up the sacrifice. St. John of Sahagun, this wonderful peacemaker, the mystic of the man, truly is a good example of that. Let us pray to him to love our Mass, to hear it devoutly, and whenever we have the occasion to do so amongst our traditional Catholic, to do what we can to sow peace. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.